due to my um, extended house arrest, due to my extended vacation, due to my extended holiday, I think it's just that I'm really lazy. How's it going? My mum has recently sent me a heap of patterns that I made whew, well over two years ago. Uh, now these shorts I originally made and I botched them so bad. Seriously, they're not great. May not have been my best effort. I have with me a uh, Quixo K3854 and I made these sailor shorts, which were really cute, but completely and totally unwearable. And I absolutely always wanted to make them again and never did. I think it's just that I'm really lazy. Anyway, due to my extended holiday, today's sewing adventure is going to be a redo of these pants. Wish me luck. So first of all, the pattern is supposed to sit kind of lower on the waist than what I originally wanted mine to. I wanted mine to be high-waisted and I didn't adjust for this. And also, I'm not really sure what I did with this band, but I did something weird. So I had it to the buttons, go through two lots of buttonholes and they fold over and it's just, it's, it's a mess. It's a total mess. Um, if I remember correctly, the instructions aren't that straightforward. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to give that a shot. And you may have noticed that I didn't post a video last week and I want to say I'm sorry. It turns out that posting weekly was probably me biting off a bit more than I can chew. So I've decided to post every second week on Sunday nights still. So hopefully you'll be there with me when that happens. If you're interested, I also got a job offer. And so I'm trying to work out how I can continue to do this as well as work full time. I really enjoy making these videos I, more than I thought I would. And um, yeah, I want to keep it going. So stay with me. Maybe a little sporadic. I may be uploading a little less often than I originally thought that I would. However, I'm really excited to see what the future holds. And um, yeah, let's get started. Now, as I've just mentioned, I did want these to be a high-waisted pant. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adjusting the pattern. Now I use brown paper in part because I'm stingy and also in part because I'm a cat owner. I found that the brown paper holds up to the cat a lot better than the tissue paper. So what I'm doing with these pattern pieces is that I'm extending them all about two centimeters to the top and on one of the waistband pieces, just the front side piece. When I last made them, I remember that I had problems getting that to fit and so I have extended that one one centimeter out wider than what it was originally supposed to be. Obviously I had to cut out my new pattern pieces that I made. I'm really sorry that you can't see it very clearly. I used the black marker to make sure that I kept the grain line and the numbers. I then, um, after I cut them out, actually wrote what they all were so that way I could use them later if I so choose to. So I had to cut out the brown paper pieces, then obviously pin them to my fabric and cut out the fabric in order to sew it all together. This is just a short video of me folding and sewing the pocket extensions. These are hidden with inside the garment. I just thought you'd really like to see how I tie my hair up in the morning. My partner calls this the French washer maid look. I think it's cute. Now for some actually useful information. What I'm doing here is sewing the seam to the inside of the pocket. So I've sewn my pocket piece to my front piece and then you sew the seam down to the inside piece of the pocket. What this does is it stops the pocket from rolling back out. You'll find that this is common on waistbands and pockets and necklines of dresses. It's called understitching the seam. And 
and time for another pearl of wisdom. So when you stitch your darts, some people say you start from the tip and go up, some people say you start from the base and go to the tip. I don't really care which way you go. The moral of the story is if you are sewing darts, you want to sew along the edge of the fabric a little bit um, at the tip so that it doesn't like come off at a really, really sharp angle. Otherwise, you know sometimes when you buy those tops and they've got the darts in the bust area and they kind of make the ladies look like they're on show, that is because they have not sewn a couple of stitches just along the edge of the fabric and they've come off at too sharp an angle and it creates that whole puckering look, which is not very flattering. Also, I got told that I should try and do different camera angles, so I'm giving that a whirl. Anyway, this is me sewing up the side seams of the front and back, basically creating two little legs, which I will then join together. What you're going to want to do is turn one leg the right way round, one leg inside out. Then you're going to want to pop your right way round leg inside the inside out leg, matching your side seams. You're going to match your seams at the bottom of your crotch first and then all the way up to the sides. Then you're going to stitch all the way around in a big U shape. That is how these pants join together. Now there are multiple ways to do this, but this just happens to be how this pattern says to do it. I'm not going to lie, if you're treating this like a sew along, this is the point where you need to stop following me for a minute because you're about to see where it all goes horribly wrong. This pattern's waistband is weird and confusing and I would definitely not do it this way. What the pattern recommends you do is join the front of the waistband together at the side seams and then the back of the waistband together at the side seams and then attach the front to the back piece at the top and then set it aside while you faff around elsewhere and then come back later to stitch the front of the waistband to the front of the shorts and then, this is my favourite bit here, fold it all over and stitch in the ditch. However, not how I would do it. Now the front waistband is attached exactly how I would personally recommend attaching the back waistband. But once again, if you were treating this like a sew along, just wait, this is still not right. First you sew the front piece to the front of the pants, then you sew the back piece to the front of the front of the waistband piece, then you sew down the sides, flip her over, press her under and stitch in the ditch. If you happen to go furniture shopping midway through your sewing project, make sure that you don't leave your new cupboard in the car for too long. Get a second set of helping hands to bring that in and then continue on your way. So this is where the wheels really fall off the apple cart. What happened is that the waistband is too long in the back for the shorts. However, the side panels were the correct size. Now I did try and record this, but it turns out that I am really bad at unpicking and holding things away from my body and apparently camera angles are just not my thing yet so here's the nuts and bolts of what I had to un undo. I undid the side seams of the entire back waistband section and I also had to unpick the top stitching and the under stitching of the seam that runs along the top. Now I didn't unpick the entire front from back from each other, I just unpicked about five centimeters either side of each side seam. Then I cut the back piece off and I ended up having to take a centimeter and a half from each side of that back seam. I also made a notch in the center back position just to make it easier for when I was putting the band back on the shorts. And then what I had to do is reattach each side seam separately. So I sewed the front part portions, then I sewed the back portions, then I had to sew the front and the back together, and then I once again had to understitch the seam where I had previously unpicked it. Now with my newly adjusted waistband, I pinned it all together and then sewed it in place. So while the back waistband is a kind of half attached, um, once again, please do not treat this like a sew along just yet. As you can see, I am getting ready to uh, stitch in the ditch for the front section. It's my favorite thing to do because it avoids all sorts of hand sewing. Uh, what I did was I ironed it under, then I pinned it in place, then I sewed it, then I unpicked it, then I folded those little side flaps in and went again. 
Now, someone did mention that I am really hard on myself because I do show all my mistakes. I believe, one, that is part of my charm, and two, I show the mistakes that way you know what is kind of easy to do if you're not thinking about it too hard and hopefully you know other people can learn from my mistakes and so a lot of people watch these YouTube videos of people sewing stuff and you know they get it right the first time and it looks smicko and everyone goes oh I could never do that and the truth is you probably can buttonholes the old-fashioned way now my new sewing machine did come with a buttonhole foot and a buttonhole setting now my old sewing machine looks a little something like uh, this so I have no idea how to use the fancy new buttonhole attachment that came with my new machine I instead um, will show you the old-fashioned way of making a buttonhole what you're going to want to do is select a zigzag stitch. You want to make it nice and wide and then select zero for the length. Sew half a dozen stitches in place to start your buttonhole. Then move the needle to one side, make the stitch narrower. I use number two on my machine. Change the length to one or 1 1.5. Sew up and down the side of the buttonhole a couple of times, finishing up at the furthest end. Change the needle back to the center, back to the wide stitch and the length back to zero. Stitch in place half a dozen times. Move the needle to the other side, adopt your narrower yet longer stitch settings and stitch up and down the opposite side of your buttonhole. Then you should be done. Finally, what you want to do is sew your buttons on behind the buttonholes. Now, I hate hand sewing and I refuse to have any documented evidence of me hand sewing, so you don't get to see that. But I did also hem the bottoms, which is a step that you really can't miss. So give that a whirl and we will see you later for the try on. in the start of the video the waistband for these shorts to make was absolutely awful um, I eventually got there in the end but it did take a couple of tries as far as things kind of go these are great for walking around in not so great sitting in at the moment uh, but they did only cost me six dollars in fabric the buttons I already had and I suppose three days of my life uh, so I can definitely make them again which I will because this seems to be the motto of my life. So when I make the next lot, I will make the back sections that centimeter and a half wider to accommodate the band because I believe that the band was the correct size and that the short bottom was not. Uh, the only other thing that I would probably tell you all is that if you're sitting down and on the correct angle, people can actually see in here. So that's a little awkward, but you know, otherwise they're really cute and I still love them. So. I'm gonna give them one more shot, but I, I won't make you watch that one. This is just a stupid. Yeah.